HSBC, the banking giant, has escaped indictment for laundering billions of dollars from Mexican drug cartels and groups linked to al Qaeda. The bank reportedly supplied a billion dollars to a firm whose founder had ties to al Qaeda and shipped billions in cash from Mexico to the United States, despite warnings the money was coming from drug cartels. Earlier this year, in a Senate investigation, concluded that HSBC provided a, quote, gateway for terrorists to gain access to U.S. dollars and the U.S. financial system. Despite evidence of wrongdoing, the Justice Department has allowed the bank to avoid prosecution and pay a $1.9 billion fine. No top HSBC officials will face charges. While it's reportedly the largest penalty ever paid by a bank, the deal has come under wide criticism. Officials reportedly agreed to seek the fine over concerns that criminal charges would have hurt the global financial system. Loretta Lynch is U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. We are here today to announce the filing of criminal charges against HSBC Bank, both its U.S. entity, HSBC U.S., and the parent HSBC Group for its sustained and systemic failure to guard against the corruption of our financial system by drug traffickers and other criminals and for evading U.S. sanctions law. HSBC, as you know, is one of the largest financial institutions in the world, with affiliates and personnel spanning the globe. Yet during the relevant time periods, they failed to comply with the legal requirements incumbent on all U.S. financial institutions to have in place compliance mechanisms and safeguards to guard against being used for money laundering. HSBC has admitted its guilt to the four account information filed today, which sets forth two violations of the Bank Secrecy Act, a violation of the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, or IEPA, and a violation of the Trading with the Enemy Act. As part of its resolution of these charges, HSBC has agreed to forfeit $1.256 billion, the largest forfeiture amount ever by a financial institution for a compliance failure. That was U.S. Attorney Loretta Lynch. Meanwhile, HSBC Group Chief Executive Stuart Gulliver said in a statement, quote, We accept responsibility for our past mistakes. We've said we're profoundly sorry for them. He added the bank had, quote, taken extensive and concerted steps to put in place the highest standards for the future. News of HSBC's fine comes as three low-level traders were arrested in London as part of an international investigation into 16 international banks accused of rigging a key global interest rate used in contracts worth trillions of dollars. The London Interbank offered rate, known as LIBOR, as the average interest rate at which banks can borrow from each other. Some analysts say it defines the cost of money. The benchmark rate sets the borrowing costs of everything from mortgages to student loans to credit card accounts. Well, for more on the latest bank scandals. We're joined by Matt Taibbi, contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine. His latest book is Griftopia, a story of bankers, politicians, and the most audacious power grab in American history. Now, how did Forbes put it, um, Matt? What's a bank got to do to get into some exactly. real trouble around here? Exactly. And what's amazing about that is that's Forbes <laughs> saying that. I mean, uh, uh, universally, the reaction, even in among the financial press, which, which is normally very bank-friendly and gives all these guys the benefit of the doubt, the reaction is, is what do you have to do to get a criminal indictment? Uh, what HSBC has now admitted to uh, is more or less the worst behavior that a bank could possibly be guilty of. Uh, they, you know, they violated the Trading with the Enemy Act, the Bank Secrecy Act, uh, and we're talking about a massive amounts of money. It was nine billion dollars that they failed to super, supervise properly. Um, this, these crimes were so obvious that apparently the cartels in Mexico specifically designed uh, boxes to put cash in so that they would fit through the windows of HSBC teller windows. Um, so it, it was so out in the open, these crimes, and there's going to be no criminal prosecution whatsoever, uh, which is incredible. And uh, emails found where bank officials were uh, instructing uh, officials in Iran and in some other countries of how best to uh, hide uh, their their efforts to move money into their system. Exactly. Yeah, and that's that's true at HSBC, and, and apparently we have a, a very similar scandal involving another British bank, Standard Chartered, which uh, also paid an, uh, an enormous fine recently uh, for uh, laundering money for uh, through Iran. 
Um, this, again, comes in the heels of the, uh, the LIBOR scandal, which has already caught up two major British banks, uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, and Barclays. So you have essentially all of the major British banks now are inveigled in these enormous scandals. Um, we have a couple of arrests you know, today involving low-level people and the LIBOR thing, but it doesn't look like any major players are going to be indicted criminally for any of this. And this whole argument that the uh, the bank is too big to indict because of the threat to the world financial system. Most people don't know that HSBC stands for Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. It's a British bank that goes back to the early days of British colonialism uh, sure. in Asia. Uh, and uh, is it too big for, uh, to, uh, to be indicted? The amazing thing about that rationale is that it's exactly the opposite of the truth. Uh, what the message that this sends to everybody uh, when when banks commit crimes and nobody is punished for it is is that uh, you can do it again. Uh, the, you know, if there's no criminal penalty uh, for committing uh, even the most obvious kinds of, of crimes, um, that tells everybody, investors all over the world, that the banking system is inherently unsafe. Uh, and so the message is this is not a move to preserve the banking system at all. In fact, it's incredibly destructive. It undermines the, the, the entire um, a conf world confidence in the banking system. It's an incredible decision that, again, is, is met with surprise even with pe by people in the in the. Financial community. On Tuesday, Thomas Curry, head of the Office of the Controller of the Currency, the lead regulator for HSBC, HSBC in the U.S., defended the settlement. These actions sent a strong message to the bank and to the financial services industry to make compliance with the law a priority to safeguard their institutions from being misused in ways that threaten American lives. That's Thomas Curry, head of the Office of the Controller of the Currency. It seems like a lot of people who are in prison right now, low-level thieves, criminals, uh, drug launderers, uh, people who've been accused of working with al-Qaeda, um, perhaps could appeal their convictions now and right. get out of jail. Right. Yeah, exactly. I was in court yesterday in, in, in criminal court in Brooklyn. I saw somebody who come out of uh, come into court who had just been a, overnight in jail for walking from one subway car to another uh, in front of a police uh, policeman. Um, you can you can do real time in jail in America for all kinds of ridiculous offenses for taking up two subway seats in, in New York City. If you're if you fall, fall asleep in the subway, people go to jail for that all the time in this country uh, for having a marijuana stem in your pocket. There 50,000 marijuana possession cases in New York City alone every year. Uh, and here we have a bank that laundered $800 million of drug money, and they can't find a way to put anybody in jail for that. That sends an incredible message, not just to the financial sector, but to everybody. Uh, it's, it's an obvious, clear double standard where one set of people gets to break the rules as much as they want, and another set of people can't, can't break any rules at all without going to jail. And I, I just don't see how they don't see this problem. Well, uh, Matt, Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer outlined some of HSBC's alleged drug cartel ties. From 2006 to 2010, the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico, the Norte del Val cartel in Colombia, and other drug traffickers laundered at least $881 million in illegal narcotics trafficking proceeds to HSBC Bank USA. These traffickers didn't have to try very hard. They would sometimes deposit hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash in a single day into a single account, using boxes, as Loretta said, designed to fit the precise dimensions of the teller's windows in HSBC's Mexico branches. Oh, Matt, this is like uh, Monopoly, the board game all over again, you know, uh, get out of jail free. You know, yeah. instead of $50, you're paying $1.9 billion, but you're still getting out of jail free. And, and this fits in the pa in, in with the pattern of the entire financial crisis. $1.9 billion sounds like a lot of money, and it definitely is. It's a record settlement. No bank has ever paid this much money before. But it's about two two months' worth of profits for for, uh, for HSBC. It's not going to cripple this bank. It's not even going to hurt them that, that badly for this year. Um, it, it it's in line with the, the Goldman Sachs settlement and the Abacus case, which was hailed at the time as, as a record settlement. It was $575 million, but that was about one twentieth of what they got just through the AIG bailout. Uh, so this is not a lot of money for these people. It sounds like a lot of money to the, to the layperson, but for the, for the crimes they committed, getting away with just 
money, and it's not even their own money. It's not their personal money. It's the shareholders' money. Uh, it, it's incredible. It's it's it really it literally is a get out of jail free card. And of course, the way that uh, big banks these days can borrow money from the U.S. Fed for no for interest for free, free. Basically, they can just take money from the government and pay the book, pay the government back. What does the Justice Department? What does the Obama administration gain by not actually holding HSBC accountable? I, you know, I, I think uh, I've asked myself that question numerous times. Um, the, I really believe, and I think a lot of people believe this, that, that the Obama administration sincerely uh, accepts the rationale that to aggressively prosecute crimes committed by this small group of too big to fail banks would undermine confidence in the global financial system and that they therefore have to give them a pass on all sorts of things uh, because we are teetering on the edge of a problem uh, and if any one of them were to fall out uh, it would cause a, a domino effect of of losses and catastrophes like the Lehman Brothers business um, and I think they're they're genuinely afraid of that and, and so that's the only legitimate explanation that you can possibly uh, assign to this situation because, as we know, Wall Street abandoned the Obama administration this year when it came to funding in, in the election. They, they heavily supported Mitt Romney and, and, and didn't give Obama much money at all. We so. have to break. When we come back, we're going to ask you more about LIBOR and also your piece, Jim DeMint, who's stepping down right. in the Senate, the fireman ed of politics. You're right. We're talking to Matt Taibbi, contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.